Welcome back to a year of Final Fantasy, and we're in the month of Hades, the 10th month during October, obviously. We'll be covering Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X-2 near the end of the month. Also, what may be a little weird, like if you watch this at the beginning, is that I tried to pair up two really different aspects of, obviously, Final Fantasy X for the background, and actually, I'm kind of happy how it turned out. If you haven't played Final Fantasy X, it kind of works, and if you have, it's completely just weird on off the wall, and I love it. So, hey, something different, right? Anyway, today we're going to start off with a video that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, and that's talk about some of the interesting Final Fantasy merchandise, the collectibles, the figures, that kind of stuff. Of course, there's an insane number of different merch, so I'm just going to pick out some of the more interesting ones that I like, maybe some that are a bit rarer than you would see, and some that, honestly, I'd just love to have. I want to try and stay away from the shirt prints and that kind of thing that you might expect, stuff that you would expect with any kind of big game launch. Those aren't really interesting to me, and I, I don't know, I just want something a little bit fun, different, that you may not have seen before. I may do another one of these merchandise videos in the future simply because there's so much of it, but we'll see. Actually, after going and looking at all this stuff, I didn't actually come across anything just mind-blowingly crazy that I wanted to, so if you have any merch that you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested in more of the rare stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what's first. So, for the first one, we have the original Final Fantasy. And this is actually a Nintendo Power Orb thing that's basically a crystal with some etching of a Final Fantasy axe and sword from the original game. Apparently, only 50 of them exist worldwide and have price ranges anywhere from $500 to some that have reportedly gone for $250,000 or more. It was created for a prize back in 1990 in a Nintendo Power issue, and yeah, I mean, that's crazy, right? Like, I've never heard of that. Speaking of orbs here, we have some more Final Fantasy orbs, specifically from Final Fantasy VII, and these are apparently material Materia chocolates. Now, I would kind of just like these to have, but then the chocolate would go bad, so that's weird, but I don't know. It's pretty appealing, I guess. The next one is actually a series of products known as the Play Arts Kai line, and this is Square Enix's kind of toy manufacturing, but I, I hesitate to even use that word toy because these are incredibly, incredibly high quality and quite expensive, I have to add. Their primary sellers are Final Fantasy merchandise, which is obviously why I'm including them here. My personal favorite of them is Kane and any of the more Dragoon ones that they have, but they do have other ones as well, which is something interesting to talk about. They have uh, reimaginings from like DC Comics, Marvel Comics. There have actually been some Star Wars ones as well, which kind of give the Stormtroopers and Darth Vader and some of the other characters that Final Fantasy kind of Japanese stylistic look. I actually really like them. Do you have any? If so, which ones are your favorites? Along with these Play Arts Kai, we actually have mini versions that are, I guess, meant for trading. I'm not too into the chibi art style, but I'm sure that these are incredibly popular. And actually, you know what? The more I look at it, the more it kind of grows on you. It's got a bit of that Final Fantasy style that gives it a nice, you know, appealing edge. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I would actually like maybe one or two of these. Next up, I'm a huge fan of lore and books and video games, and we've actually already talked about a lot of these, but I think this one may be a next purchase for myself, and this is the Encyclopedia Eorzea, all about Final Fantasy XIV, all the lore and the characters and everything. This stuff is awesome. I absolutely love this kind of encyclopedia, you know, world building stuff, specifically because I like to pick and choose and kind of mold that stuff into my own world, which you should totally go and watch with our Crystal Keep Chronicles. SNES RPG, that's a D&D game. Yeah, um, you may like it. Sorry for the plug, but I love that stuff. Anyway, going on, kind of in the same vein, actually, there are some items out there which people like to call uh, demakes, and that's actually a perfect word for them. And I know a lot of people are for or against all this homebrew stuff, but hey, I gotta give credit where it's due. This stuff is really appealing to me, especially when it's done in such a way like this. And what this is, is Final Fantasy VII for the NES. I guess a team of people demade the game, made all the sprites and everything, and flashed it onto a Final Fantasy VII cart. So it comes in this nice box. Like I said, it's got a white cart. It's got a really nice manual, a map with it. I love this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of them out there for various systems and games. So this one isn't necessarily special as far as like it being the only one ever, but it's a good representation of the quality of these demakes that are out there. And next, well, let's take a look. Yeah, I'm not going to say any more about that. 
Anyway, next up, Sippo came out with some official Final Fantasy lighters that I actually have no real use for, but they are incredibly alluring, I guess would be the best word. So I would love to have these. I'm sure they are expensive as all get out, but they're really nice. Next up, we have something super weird, but that's why I made this video, right? We have a list of perfumes. This one that I'm showing you right now is from Final Fantasy 13, and I'm not sure actually who makes these, but they sell for about $78 per bottle, and these were released during the 2009 Tokyo Game Show, and I guess they've been doing it since then with all their big releases. There have been Cloud Strife Perfume, Sephiroth, Lightning, which is what you're seeing here, and more recently Noctis, available only in Japan or online, and it was released on June 18th, 2013, which is super weird because that game did not come out until just this past what November October whenever it came out so yeah Final Fantasy perfume there you go if you want to smell like Noctis or Sephiroth or Lightning there yep just uh go buy that the next one I'm sure a lot of people have seen before but there's a bunch of novelty themed energy drinks and of course Final Fantasy was a part of that craze as well it kind of happened in the mid 2000s and there are a ton here lots of Final Fantasy 7 stuff probably was put out whenever Final Fantasy 7 compilation was uh kind of at the peak of its hype next up something that I don't really want to harp too much on because they have them everywhere but there are a lot of plushies out there a lot of stuffed animals obviously the Moogle and Tonberry ones seem to be fan favorite there's also a lot of uh Chocobo ones out there kind of dressed up in different jobs probably from chocobo's dungeon i would expect that was what it was pushing yeah lots of plushes out there moogle plushes the next up i think i'm going to end this video with the books of amano's art which i just really enjoy and i may have talked about them before but hey i want to talk about them here because they are just fantastic books to have if you are appreciator of that kind of art and there's a big trilogy hardback that is just pages and pages it's huge displays of his art which i love and i guess really that's about it interestingly enough there wasn't a lot here that i necessarily came across and I was just like, oh my god, this is awesome. There were a couple of things, especially like the D makes and other stuff. But yeah, if you have any kind of Final Fantasy merchandise, let me know and I'll talk about it in a future video if I get enough of these weird ones. Stuff that you don't really see a lot. You know, I don't really care about the keychains or limited edition statues or consoles or anything. Those are kind of just par for the course at this point. But actually, surprise, I am going to talk about one more thing. I recently came across this and I hope it's interesting to you because it was to me. This is something incredibly rare. Honestly, I can't even confirm it. But but it at least seems legitimate. Apparently Disney was in talks with Square to release a comic series about Final Fantasy IV way back in the early 90s, and apparently a few issues were created, but the project was dropped before it even really got off the ground and had a chance to publicly debut. So that is something that I just came across like afterwards after the fact of making this video. That's all we have today. Again, if you have something that you want me to talk about that kind of is in this realm, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to talk about it, I like learning more and more things about obscure kind of Final Fantasy lore. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed this month. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to go back to a sort of catch-all month. We're just going to talk about lore and jobs and just sporadic games and stuff like that. So welcome to the month of Hades. As always, until next time, Crystal Warriors, keep on gaming.